It's a rainy day. Share my umbrella. Well, yes, but uh, say, you're not the kind of fella who'd uh, ask me over to his apartment just to look at the pictures. Well, uh, it's a rainy day. A rainy day? We can't go walking. I know, but uh, we can stand here talking. But then I'm hoarse. And you've forgotten your goulashes. <laughs> See, it's a rainy day. Honey, would a drink do you good? Yeah, I think that it would, uh, somehow. I vow. Well, may I ask for a sip? Uh, got a flask on your hip right now? Well, uh, not now, but here comes a cab. Come on, let's grab it. Well, I don't trust men who have that habit. Well, you really might get uh, double pneumonia. Gee, it's a rainy day. A rainy day? You know, I'm really glad I met you. A rainy day, I won't forget you. Gee, you know it's nice that we can both be sharing this taxi. It's such a rainy day. Well, then why don't you come on and stop being formal? Oh, no, uh, take it easy now. Get right back to normal. Or else, you know, you'll be the only one in this taxi. Yeah, well, it's still a rainy day. What I sought long in vain, I have caught in the rain today. Yes, it looks like it's my day. Do I look like a fish? Well, I'm hooked and I wish to stay all day. That's it. Now I'll take you home. Thanks. But not to your home. Oh, well, uh, do you think I'll feel at home in your home? Absolutely. And then we'll begin where we leave off in this taxi. All on a rainy day. Well, a good, good afternoon or evening, everyone. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, welcoming you back to another Kitchen Counselor Thrift Hall. Now, I'm going to be nice this time because it's chilly outside. At least it is here on the East Coast. It, coast. It's raining and windy, and we haven't gotten out of the 50s today. So if you're lounging around in your polyester stretch pants, I'm not going to make you get up and change even though I have on my fancy pants again. Woo! Now, you know, everything that you see here comes from flea markets, antique, well, no, not antique stores. I take that back. Uh, flea, flea markets, thrift shops. Uh, nothing here is from an estate sale. That's it. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff floating around here on the old East Coast. So let's talk about what you see in front of you. But first, and I don't know why I don't have any coffee out. I really shouldn't tease you with these amber cordials because that's the only thing that's not for sale. I found four of these, just four, and um, I'm gonna keep these four for myself. This is amber in color glass down here. I don't know if you can see it. These are gonna date to the 1930s. Um, and I just actually have a little bit of uh, flat Diet Coke <laughs> in there because that's what was in the refrigerator and it's been sitting in there for about a month. So I need to go ahead and drink it. So that's what I have in there just to show off. But yes, I'm going to keep these four little ambers. Okay, let me see here. The old man says he wants to be fed. I have to feed the cat. I'll be right back. Okay, the cat is fed and all is right with the world. So now let's look at what we've got in front of us. We'll talk a little bit about the things that you see. Down here in front, a lot of you are gonna go, aha, 
Uh, Cupies, Cupies. Well, I think everybody knows the story, really, of Rose O'Neill and her Cupie dolls. Now, she thought it up sometime around 1908 or 1909, and originally uh, this was conceived as a comic strip. Here's a picture of the beautiful Rose O'Neill. Thought you might like to see that, okay? And um, the earliest Cupid dolls were actually made of bisque porcelain, the earliest ones, and they're quite collectible today. As you get into the 1920s, they become celluloid, and different companies were able to actually uh, produce legitimate and authentic Cupid dolls. Now, we're not going to call these Cupid dolls because they're not, but they have a Cupid haircut, if you will. So they're sort of Cupid esque. And these are actually made probably in the 1950s. Uh, and they're actually Lefton. That's right. And, uh, so they're Japan and the little Lefton stickers are gone but anybody who collects Lefton or knows Lefton recognizes uh, the numbers that Lefton would put on the bottom so the little red Lefton foil stickers are gone which is not unusual now these were made in a series and I think there were maybe six or eight of these in different poses. I have three. There is no damage on any of them, so they're all in excellent condition, and it's bisque porcelain. I think they are about four inches long, and he's probably about four inches tall. And they all have these cute little blue wings on the back of them. Oh, well, this one you can see from the front, his blue wings. And we'll turn this little guy around, and you can see the wings there as well. So again, all left in bisque uh, porcelain uh, from the 50s into the early 60s. The faces are absolutely adorable. And which one is your favorite? Hmm, I, I like this guy right here, because he can't quite seem to figure out what he wants to do next. So these three are all together, listed all together in one auction. Now back here I have six uh, glasses, and they're all going to date probably to the 1930s. And I don't know whether they're Tiffin or Libby or which company made them. There were numerous companies that made numerous patterns, and I didn't look these up. It's not necessarily uh, an elegant pattern that I recognize. And you may say, well, Scott, why did you just buy six? And you know, I'll tell you, you do not have to have, a lot of folks have downsized. You might be in a retirement apartment or you just got rid of the big house and the china closet and the big set for 12 and 16, that's gone. Maybe you don't have anything that's elegant. Maybe it's just you and your significant other or you and the wonderful memories you have of a significant other. Who knows? But you know, you can still be fancy and you don't have to have a closet full of china and glassware. So I'm putting these up for sale. And this could be, as I said, just for one or romantic dinners or, hey, what's today? Monday, Monday night meatloaf, get the crystal out. So we've got three sizes. Now these all match. Here are the small cordials. And I don't, you know, get into all of, you know, how many ounces and whatnot. I did measure them, so that's in the description uh, on the auction site. But I think we basically have something like, oh, eight inches, six inches, and five inches, something like that. But here's a little cordial. And then you can have a champagne or even a tall sherbet. And then back there is your uh, wine glass. And these are all in excellent condition with no chips. And the glass is beautiful, beautifully etched. So if you want to add a little elegance and you don't have a big china closet, that might be something someone is interested in. And I say use them seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Even drink your Sunday morning 
orange juice out of them. Now back here are two beautiful pieces in gold, gold encrusted. And the patterns on these is the daisy and rose. I'll zoom in and let you see them. Now, one uh, says, let's look at the, which one should we look at first? I guess we'll look at the one that says Packard and we'll pull it out. Turn it upside down. Is there anything in it? No, it's white porcelain on the inside. There is the, um, I'm sorry, not Packard. I always say Packard because I live right next to the old Packard uh, automobile showroom here in Philadelphia, which is on Broad Street. I look out my window and I see it. It's a beautiful old building. This is Pickard, P-I-C-K-A-R-D. Can you see that? Not an automobile. Okay. Beautiful porcelain encrusted. You can see the daisy and uh, rose pattern there. This is in excellent condition with no damage at all. That is a beautiful, I think that's about a 10 inch vase. It matches the pitcher, oh, pitcher, P-I-T-C-H-E-R. And this one is also in really good condition. And when we turn this over, we see that it's actually French Limoges, BNC Limoges, made in the Limoges region of France. Both of these uh, are actually made by the same company. And you can see the patterns on them uh, are the same as well, the rose and the daisy pattern. It's really, really pretty stuff. I've had several pieces of this before. I'm trying to just hold the camera still so you can uh, see how pretty the pattern is. And these are going to date between 1920 to 1930. So luxury items when they were new. The only issue on this one, and it's hardly an issue at all, if we turn this around, there is a little bit of wear on the gold right here on the handle. As you can see, some of it is worn off. So someone really did use this picture, but the only place where we see loss of gold is right here where uh, the hands touched this pitcher, pouring out ice water at glamorous dinners. Have you ever heard of Franz Anton Mehelm? Well, I hadn't <laughs> until I found this. And when I found this in the thrift shop, I said, ah, Delft, of course, it's from the Netherlands. Well, fooled me. It's not from the Netherlands at all. It's actually made in Germany. And I'll turn it upside down and let you see. There's a lot going on on the back. It's hard to make out right here, Royal Bond, but that's what we see. Royal Bond. And then different numbers that are placed on there. And then in here is really hard to make out. Well, that's about as close as we're gonna get. You can barely see the word Bond and Franz. Hans and Franz. And you can see uh, the initials there. So, uh, Franz Anton Mihelm, he was a potter in Bonn, Germany from 18, 1830s to the 1930s. And this piece really is going to date because of the back stamp and whatnot. It dates it to before the turn of the century, 1890s to about 1900. Okay, so it's in that blue and white deft, deft, Delft style. Really nice scalloped edge, and you can see that there's actually a sort of a ripple effect there embossed into the, into the porcelain. And a nice, I guess it really looks like a winter scene of the windmill, the geese flying overhead. It's really, really pretty. Large, about 14 inches in length. You did notice on the back right there some little cracks in the glaze. They may go a little bit deeper than that, but they do not show up on the front. So if we turn this around at the front, I don't see those cracks. So they're not very deep. They're just sort of surface cracks on the back. You will see a tiny bit of staining right there. Not much. Crazing of the glaze, very minor. 
and the only other damage is two tiny little chips on the back, which right there in the center, there you see them. You see those two little chips? That's it. You see them from the back, but you don't see them from the front. So really a pretty piece in the Delft style, made in Germany, um, 120 years old. All right, these babies over here, uh, I meant to say over here also when we were looking at these Cupid doll type babies is a lot of you are familiar with piano babies. We've talked about them before. And they were often used uh, in the late Victorian era, probably into the early 20s. And the great big old upright pianos, it was customary to have a piano scarf over the top. And these babies would sit on the top of the piano on top of the scarf and sort of hold it in place. And you can sort of just refer to these as piano babies if you like. If, if not, we'll just call them figurines. Now these two are also made of bisque and they're, they're, they're pretty well done. Amazingly, there's no damage on either one. Let me get down. All the ten fingers and toes are all here. And if we come up in here, we can see, boy, they're really pretty fine detail. Uh, as you can see, and there's absolutely, I mean, I've gone over these. And I can find no damage anywhere on the two of these. This one, uh, I'll just show you in case it shows up. Sometimes what you see, now a lot of you see that and you go, oh, look at that crack. Well, it's not. It's just there's a line in the pottery there. It is not a crack. And, and you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, it may very much look like a crack on this uh, video, but it's completely smooth. Uh, and there's no... There's no thump when you thump on it, and I've held it up to the light, and there's, there's just a it's just a mark in the in the pottery there, in the in the bisque, but uh, it's it, the piece is not cracked, and I was able to actually shine a light up up the inside there, uh, <laughs> to be able to to, to to determine that. So just a little imperfection. Well, that's to be expected on mass-produced items that were made in Japan and these are made in the 1950s, 60s, 70s in Japan and they are brought into the United States so there is a um, an importer in New York uh, based in New York called Arnart, A-R-N-A-R-T and the, 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 the marks on the bottom of this is really trying to fool you and imitate a better German pottery. Now we think of Meissen, those are the crossed swords. There is a German company that uses crossed arrows and I can't remember what they're called. But it's funny that they they put the crossed arrows on the bottom but they're still letting us know over here, well it's made in Japan so we appreciate that. So not the quite the quality of what the Germans were doing but not bad at all. The blue eyes are really pretty. And uh, there's a lot of detail on these, so I think they're really nice. And I hope someone else will think so too. And they're quite large. Back here is a piece of porcelain. And you look at it and you say, well, it sure does look like Nippon. And it does look like Nippon. And, you know, I turn it upside down and look at that, nothing absolutely nothing. Now look, I'm going to insert a photograph. What do you see? Well, you see a, we'll put them side by side. You see another bottom to a pitcher almost identical to this with that same ring in the bottom. Even the missing glaze on the, on the ring. We see the glaze on the inside of the ring, but not on the perimeter of it. And we can clearly see a Nippon mark there. So I'm convinced they're made by uh, that, that this is that this piece here that I have is just simply unmarked. And you know, it just goes to show you that there there are very few absolutes, right? There are very few absolutes in life. 
So how did this make it out of Japan without the Nippon sticker on the bottom? We don't know. Did it come to the U.S. as a blank and then was decorated here? I wouldn't think so because it's decorated in the style that was so popular at that time with the, with the raised uh, uh, moriage here or moriagi as some of you, like as some folks will pronounce it. Moriage or moriagi. So it's really beautifully decorated, beautifully decorated in excellent condition. Uh, there's just no mark on the bottom of it. It somehow made its way here into the U.S. with nothing on the bottom. Now this piece here didn't make it to the U.S. with nothing on the bottom and it's clearly marked Nippon. And no, this mayonnaise ladle does not go with this dish right here. Turn it upside down you can see hand painted Nippon right there so that helps us date the piece between 1891 to 1921 and so there it's gilded there are three feet and there are two handles it's beautifully done now i realize that little lemon servers don't usually have feet and they usually don't have two handles there's usually one little handle right here almost like a nappy you know that you stick your finger through it's circular so if you want to serve nuts on this or lemon wedges or ginger snaps i really don't know uh what its specific intended use was but as beautiful as it is boy you could put an old tuna fish sandwich on there and it would elevate it would it not? It's really pretty. It's in excellent condition as well. So I like that a lot. And then also here is a Noritake mayonnaise ladle in this encrusted uh, gold. These ladles are hard to find and they of course always came with a, a mayonnaise bowl uh, and an underplate. So we're just going to throw that up for auction all by itself. And uh, somebody will be thrilled to get that. And hopefully they'll reunite it with a gold uh, bowl that doesn't have a ladle. And then finally back here, I'm going to start throwing in some electric lamps into my uh, weekly auctions. I've got enough of them. And uh, because, you know, this is the season where the days are getting shorter. And another few weeks we'll be turning those clocks, right? So it's going to be dark at 5 o'clock. We're staying inside and we need some light so i'm going to be doing lots of electric lamps i have amber light bulbs in here but i'm going to turn these off to show you that the shades are actually a beautiful uh cranberry now this is all glass you remember your grandparents had these on their uh server in the in the dining room right these were popular in the 1930s 40s 50s and even the 60s but this pair right here, and I uh, can tell by the sockets and the, the, the cords that were on them and just the style of them, the sort of the chunkiness down here in the etching, that these are really going to be uh, more into the 1940s, into the early 50s. I don't think these were made any time past 1955, so we'll say late 30s uh, into the 50s. Uh, there's no damage, nothing is missing, and I'm hoping you can see this. I, I, uh, all of the prisms are here. Occasionally, there's going to be a little, you know, flea bite off the tip of a prism, prism, but they're all there, and uh, the the globes come out, of course, so that you can put whatever light bulb in you want. All I had were amber, so that's what I put in there. I can't really take them off now because the light bulbs are hot. There's the on-off switch, and then uh, they are rewired, and I have them sort of covered up so you don't have to look at all the wire, but it's, it's very, I was very ge generous, and I went ahead and used modern silver uh, electric line cord to replace them, replace the old cords, so you've got definitely five feet of electric cord on each lamp, so they're really pretty. They are, you know, would look glamorous on a fireplace or in a dining room. 
on your dining room server or, or buffet. Hey, look, you want to get fancy pantsy, put them in the bathroom. I, I think we should just live it up and enjoy it, right? We're all stuck in our houses <laughs> these days, so let's live it up. Well, I had a lot of fun putting all of these items together, and uh, I sure do appreciate you watching. And hey, except for those amber cordial stems over there, everything is for sale in the old curiosity shop. And the link is always in the description box below the video. Well, this is Monday, and that means tomorrow is my big sourcing day. I'm going to take you with me. So tune in tomorrow night, hopefully, for another Shop With Me video. And until then, I wish you all the best. This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.